me fill out swatches four through six just to see if you got those done correctly. You have to look in your notes on silk to see why the end use of drapery requires a lining. But as you can see here, this Tussa silk drapery made with Tussa filling uses a filament yarn in the warp direction and a spun yarn in the filling direction. Let's actually take a look at this fabric to see if we can see what we're talking about here. So here I have a swatch that is similar colored to the one that you have in yours. In this swatch right here, the yarns that are going in the short direction in the swatch are the filling yarns. The long yarns that are going in the long direction are the warp yarns. If I pull one of the yarns out from the warp side of the swatch, I'm having to dig around to find one here because I'm getting some really short ones. All right, there we go. So if I pull one of these yarns out, you can see that this is very, very fine, very small shiny, lustrous, and smooth. That is a filling yarn. No rough fiber ends, and when I try to pull it apart with my fingers, I really can't do it. Now on the other hand, the filling yarns in this swatch are thicker and fatter, and I'm easily able to pull fibers off of them. You see the little fiber ends sticking out there, so although it still has a little bit of shine, Right, we can pull it apart and that tells us that this is a spun yarn. Silk is born as a filament, which was used in the filling, right? but it was the tuss of silk from uh, wild silkworms that just uh, were, the cocoons were gathered off the tree. That's what was used to make the filling yarns. So this tuss of silk is a special fabric. On to the next swatch. You notice the dash here indicates that there's no particular uh, finish that was applied to these. Sometimes the characteristic on these lines is provided by your swatch kit as in when it mentions the weight after the weave or construction type. But in other cases, we would have actually gathered this information from one of your textbooks. That's why I'm going in to show it to you here. So here is the China silk, which is as different as it could be 
from your Tussa Silk. See how smooth that is? Yes. No 3D crimp on that swatch. When I pull out one of the yarns, in this case that was a warp yarn going in the long direction, right up here, can you see how shiny that is and how no fiber ends are sticking out of the side? So although silk can be cut up to be a spun yarn, in this case this is definitely a filling yarn. Now this third swatch, swatch number six, it is a rayon swatch. I have one that is a slightly different uh, color than yours, but I will still be able to use it to show you some of the difference between the yarns, I'm pretty sure. So here's the swatch that I have. And you'll notice that it says here it has a textured filament warp and a spun filling. So when I pull a yarn out of the warp direction, whoops, that's my yarn from the China Silk Swatch. Okay, you can see that although it looks, the surface of it looks kind of fuzzy, right? When we pull on it, we don't get any little fine fibers coming off. And when I try to break it with my fingers, I really can't. You can see actually how shiny that is. So any appearance of fuzz on the surface of this yarn is actually due to the texturization of the yarn. Now let's compare that with the with the filling yarn, which is is a spun yarn in this case. And so this is a great example of how uh, rayon can be both a filament and cut up to be a spun yarn. So this one here, um, I'm going to untwist it a, a little bit just to see if I can get it to kind of um, start to come loose right in there. Let's see where it's sort of spreading open. Yep, I was able to rip it with my fingers, and then I could see little fibers that I can pull off on the ends there. All right, so that is an example of a spun yarn from a manufactured fiber.